Well, welcome everybody to count us on one of the biggest days of the year for these two countries. Lithuania and Slovenia will face off for the Olympic ticket for a place in Tokyo. There were six, there are now two. And they have been the dominant force in this Olympic qualifying tournament. And we have a sellout crowd here in the Zalgiro Arena for what could be one of the games of 2021. Both teams obviously come here unbeaten. Both teams, you've got to say, have improved with every single game they've played. And now it's all on the line. Luka Doncic and Slovenia taking on not only the Lithuanian team, but this Lithuanian crowd. The band is here. The arena is packed. And for me and Mark here, Mark Mills, it's just an unbelievable atmosphere. Yeah, it's absolutely unreal. Save the best till last is definitely what's happened here. Before the tournament, this was the game that everyone was predicting, the game that was getting everyone excited, and finally it's here. Uh, and as you said, we could be set for an absolute classic today. Two heavyweights of international basketball going head-to-head -head for that ticket to the Olympics. Well, Slovenia will be introduced first to this crowd, and, uh, well, you know what the reaction's going to be. Uh, but in some ways, that's going to be a real incentive for Luka Doncic and his teammates as they try and do something Slovenia have never done, and that is make and play in the Olympic Games. And the, exist the current Eurobasket champions that have looked absolutely tremendous in their three games building up to this final game, averaging over 100 points a game, playing the game the way everybody loves it played, loose, free, and enjoying with smiles on their face, and they have just been exceptional. Yeah, they have been absolutely flying throughout this tournament. They got out of the gates really, really quickly. And like you say, these guys are already history makers. They've returned seven players from their Euro Basket gold medal, their first ever medal in any international tournament at senior men's level. And uh, it, you wouldn't put it past them to create some more history here today and to be the first Slovenian national team to make it through to Olympic basketball finals in Tokyo. Well, they were given a test by Venezuela in the semi-final who really did stay at home and that the defensive end really slowed down this uh, Slovenian offense for large chunks of the game. It's going to be really interesting to see how coach Sakulic will make some adjustments to that when he has to go against 11,000 people and 12 players. Yeah, he absolutely does. And uh, what are 12 players Lithuania have brought together? And the one thing you would say about Lithuania, they are one of the teams, as the week has progressed, they have got better. Slovenia may have been flying high from the start, but Lithuania game after game have found improvements on both ends of the floor. Um, but it really is, you know, front court Slovenia against the back, uh, front court, sorry, of Lithuania against the back court Slovenia, which will win, could uh, define who goes to the Olympics. Well, that's both teams introduced to the crowd, and this is... Well, this day we're back to the real world when it comes to basketball games in this arena at the moment. Absolutely no space in the arena. We're going to be back and speak some more about this one after the national anthems. And we'll start with the national anthem of Slovenia. And now the national anthem of Lithuania.
Well, it's been a long time since we've played in full arenas. The Lithuanian government here removing those restrictions, face masks, etc. Here is the third team on the floor, Mr. Vasquez, Mr. Fernandez, and Mr. Mazzoni from Puerto Rico, Argentina, and Italy. Make sure you get in the picture, Mr. Fernandez. And uh, these are the third team, and as we always say, their teamwork as important in many ways as these two teams. Going to get a look at the starting lineups as we first get a look at the legend, the living legend that is Arvidas Sabonis. And what must he be thinking at the moment? He was part of that 1992 bronze medal winning Lithuanian team. And he knows as well as anybody, if they don't win today, this will be the first Lithuanian team not to be at the Olympic Games. As we see the starting lineup for Slovenia. Yeah, and again, plenty of talent. Mike Toby, obviously, in his debut for the national team this week, has really developed a relationship with the superstar that is Luka Doncic straight away. A real one-two punch they've brought to the table. But the star is Luka Doncic. He hasn't disappointed. 18 points, 10.3 assists, and seven rebounds in these qualifiers. And he's done most of it exactly like that with a smile on his face. Well, and he hasn't spent a lot of minutes on the floor getting him either. Uh, yesterday was his first time he played in a fourth quarter. Coach Alexander Sekulic, and it's always a tough task, you trying to integrate superstars into a roster. A little bit, a little bit in, easier because of Luka Doncic's approach to national team. The most important thing he sees in his career is national team success. That makes life easier, but it's still, he's done a great job in a short space of time getting these guys singing off the same hymn sheet. So there's the pictures of what is always a passionate crowd here in Lithuania. And we're gonna get a look at the starting lineup right now, Mark. Yeah, and again, as we'd expect, uh, a strong starting five. Interesting to see Dimsha in. Understandable though, because he shot the ball really well in their semi-final. But the big men, Sabonis and Valanciunis, are going to be the biggest problem, we think, for Slovenia. Kalnietis will be guarding it at the top and controlling the tempo of the game. Sabonis has been one of those players that's got better as we progress. 17 points, eight rebounds in that semi-final uh, performance against Poland and 70% from the field. He's starting to find a role now, working alongside Valanciunis. And that is a scary prospect for any national team to go up against. Well, the discussion before this game was building on what Venezuela did. Was coach uh, Mascoleonis going to make any changes? Well, Dimser as a starter is a change. But what Venezuela demonstrated clearly uh, was their, their ability to slow down the ball movement with uh, Slovenia by actually just playing denial and to an extent not having to worry too much about help. Lithuania have the huge advantage of having so much size underneath that they could really do that. And you've got to, you've got to assume that Dimps is in there and he'll guard uh, Doncic at the start and he'll try, and they're just going to run body after body after body because Dimps is hard to play. Yeah, absolutely. And Dimps is one of those players on the defensive end. It, 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 you know, he's like a terrier. He will chase and chase. He'll go over screens, through screens. He will just fight for every bit of space that he needs to stay in front of his man you know we'll see if he's the first to match up against Doncic and trying to slow things down that's going to be key for Lithuania but like you say the pleasure that they have is that their guards can chase harder and maybe a little bit more aggressively on the perimeter because you've got the rim protection of Valanciunas and Sabonis right behind them um, but Slovenia if they can get in full flow it is tough to stop them scoring well, they're shooting over 40% from the three-point line, largely because of their ball movement. Every single person in a blue uniform can shoot the three. And that means if you're Valentunas or Sabonis, you better get your feet outside the keyway and contest that three-point shot. So you could argue a coach with no pressure, Sekulic, apart from the expectation of a nation, whereas Chalunas has the whole weight of a nation expectation on his shoulders. Well, welcome inside the Zalgiro Arena. And Slovenia get, that's a, that's a goal 10. Slovenia get the first two on a quick release off the jump. So Slovenia in the blue, Lithuania in the white. And uh, nice, fortunate start. It was ultimately a smart read by Dragic though. Uh, you know, Valanciunas won the tip. He's always gonna be likely to win the tip. He's very aggressive on the, uh, the opening tip of the game, but Dragic knew where it was going. 
and capitalised on that. Well, if the officials are going to call it this tight off the ball, then uh, Slovenia will win this basketball game because there's no way that they're, they're going to lose their rhythm on the perimeter if they call that type of touch and, and foul. And Slovenia have gone straight into yeah, a 2-3 uh, zone. They see the threat of the big men too much for them to go man-to-man. Kalinidis, -man. well, they forced the tough shot, but no one boxed out. And the problem in the zone is finding a body. Yeah, it is, but you wouldn't expect the problem to be an easy driving lane that Kalinidis had found there. He shouldn't find that space. Nice pass, easy to... And uh, Luka Doncic tells the official, you've just called a tight, little touchy one down that end. So give me a little protection here. Man to man on the make. Kalinidis again penetrates. Dimsher in the corner for three. It's good. And that's why he's been brought into the starting five. Yes, uh, in the game, the semi-final yesterday, he had a great performance from range. And defensively, he's no slouch either. Inside, outside, Blazic for three, count it. And if you do not contain this Slovenian team and you get into rotations, they will find each other and get the open look. And if Dims is out there to score, as you say, yeah, he's got a great shoot. He has to do a better job at getting over that screen. Here's Kalinidis in the half court. Again, breaks it down, attacks it. Upstairs for Valanciunas for the throw down. And this game is playing out exactly as we expected. Valanciunas is going to be a big part of it. The front court is tough for Slovenia to contain. But again, at the other end of the floor, Slovenian ball movement and body movement is impressive. Doncic to the corner. Toby with a three is short. A corner three for Toby is something we haven't seen. Early touch. Sabon is going to work on the catch. Great decision. And he throws it down with real authority with a left hand. And you see what it means to him as well, the roar to the crowd. The passion in the heart was never in doubt for Lithuania. And hopefully for them that plays a part for their win. The great thing for me on the Sabonis catch is because caught and went. Didn't stick the ball, defense had no chance to clog the middle. And then just went to work and threw it down. Doncic picks up the, draws the contact and Again, Dims is having to work so hard, but he's just getting broken down. Dunches doesn't get the soft touch to go. But this is the difference we have that Slovenia have in this game compared to the previous games. They now have got true rim protectors sitting behind them. So when Slovenia are breaking on that pick and roll, it's not as easy as it has been for Luka to find space for the shot or the pass. Kalinidis under a lot of pressure to go to the corner. Valentinus doesn't get a touch. Limsa then puts it inside now. Tries to Barrett work his way and they're going to force him to the baseline. Clears out a little bit and just throws the beautiful hook. Great touch. And for all the effort to try and force him to the baseline, they just couldn't force him. Blazic in traffic is going to get uh, the benefit of the call. And in both instances, you've got to love the way both teams, the tempo is, is really quick. No one's holding this and try to let the defense set. Everything is in in the action. No one is actually setting and letting the defense set, Mark. Yeah, as you as a neutral, you obviously, we've hyped this. Uh, everyone in basketball has hyped this game. You kind of worry that it doesn't live up to the hype. We're just about two and a half minutes into the game and it is playing out exactly as we wanted to. High tempo, aggression and passion. And both teams go into what they are good at. Doncic trying to take control early. And Lithuania, for the first time, really leaning on their bigs to lead them to glory. Lazic makes the first chance to make this a two-point game, which he does. And after the quick show of uh, the zone early, picking up man to man, Kalinidis breaks the defense, defense down. He's been more active and more aggressive in these first couple of minutes than he's been in the last three games. Valanciunas gets caught up with... Uh, Blazic and Blazic picks up foul number two. They do have rotations in the one to three spots, Slovenia, but Blazic is probably their quickest defender. Yeah, I think so too, but like you say, the, the backcourt's not the worry. Grigonis on a little push and a float and doesn't get it to drop. Slovenia save it, Doncic has it in transition. Gets the early screen, tries to break down, gets to the foul line, looks for a little contact in the lane for two, doesn't get the roll. 
and there's not going to be a lot of offensive joy on the glass for Slovenia. Doncic uh, missed a couple of gimmies for him. Offensive foul. And uh, one of those things that uh, officials across the world of basketball have been asked to clean up a little bit in the yeah. last year or so. Just over exuberance from Sabonis, they didn't stay static long enough. He'd already started rolling. He just needs to wait for the contact from the defender. And if anything, use that as momentum to, to help his roll be quicker and more fluid. Doncic again breaks it down, kicks it wide open. Chanka is short. Doncic on the offensive glass. Gets to the court, Lazic wide open for three and just strokes it and you've got to scramble harder than that against this team. Yeah, that's the worry for me for Lithuania, that you cannot afford to have completely uncontested shots from outside. Slovenia will kill you and kill you in a hurry if you give them those opportunities. All right, he towed the line on what we thought was a three. Inside again, touch with Sabonis. This time he holds for a little longer. Defense is set off the glass, doesn't get the drop. It's a battle in there. And fouls called and I think if that's on Sabonis that'll be foul number two yeah it is that's a worry for Lithuania it's one of their two key parts of the puzzle let's have a look at the replay interesting camera angle for the replay let's look at the battle that was to see just to say there. there was a six of one and half a dozen of another I'm, but, uh, I'm not gonna lie that's the kind of basketball I like to see just putting everything onto the floor every possession matters to both of these teams then Juice checks in, they go a little bit more traditional with a little bit more foot speed at the four. Jakob Lazic will advance the basketball. Vlagic, who's had a fairly quiet start. Chanchara in the lane and kicks. Toby with that open three from the top, which is his spot and has roped it from the three-point line you have to be able to shoot the three on this team and that's the problem you've got with the Valanciunas Toby matchup you know Valanciunas has the strength and size at the other end but he's not happy coming out and defending the perimeter we go on this again with that little push shot both he and Doncic have uh, come up short on those little penetrations here's Luka Doncic again turns down the screen breaks the defense down over the head for Toby for three goes short and Valanciunas did a much better job at challenging the shot Lithuania in transition, Dimsa steps back for three, is no good. The Valentunas can't control it, foul on the play, and Dimsa will pick up the personal. And that's Dimsa's second as well, and the problem you have now is we've gone from almost the opposite. So with regards to Lithuania, they had the least fouls per game, they're only committing 12 fouls a game. Up until uh, today's game, they already have five, and we're only five minutes in. Yes, they've increased the intensity of the defense, but I'm not sure they're necessarily the smartest fouls that they're giving away at the moment. All right, so uh, they're going to take Dimsa out because uh, that will be his uh, second foul. He's going to be replaced by uh, Kukovesius as he checks in. And half the thing about this, uh, the high-scoring Slovenian uh, roster is not so much that they do it all in transition, they just shoot phenomenal percentages. And it's not... Uh, it's one of those debates that I'm sure we're going to have throughout this game, Mark, about is increasing the tempo going to be in Lithuania's favor or is that just going to make it an up and down game where Slovenia are just really at home yeah I know I, my personal opinion is I think Lithuania will be more comfortable slowing the tempo down it also means that you've got more chance that Valanciunas is going to be an active participant on both ends of the floor can he this control for the first time not being able to break it down but it goes inside to Valanciunas he's going to try and barrel to the middle go into that right hand tough move Super, super finish. There's no way Toby can do anything else. Did a pretty decent job, but he does let him get to the middle. And he's so affected off that right hand with that hook. Doncic in the lane. Gets a block from Valanciunas. Just like waited for him. Mid-court foul by Chanka. Or Dragic, rather. And this is what we were talking about before. The fact that before, the games they've had so far this week, Slovenia, Doncic has been able to get round that pick and roll, go to the basket, and there's not been the same level of rim protection. He's now facing up against Valanciunas or Sabonis. It's a completely different beast that they're going up against. Valanciunas above the foul line. Ligonis takes another runner, gets this one to drop. And the Seska guard, if he gets going, he's going to be a huge factor in this one. One-point game, far side of the ring, no good. 
great work on the glass by Chang Ka. He gets the piece alive. And it's a war under there. And Blagic comes up and the quickness and Blasic with a three. Got it! And, and from the perimeter, Blasic is perfect so far. Knocks down yet another three. Yeah, Blasic scoring over half the points so far for Slovenia. And I think that tells you how the game is playing out. Valentunas again, they force him baseline this time. Toby does a good job, and I think he's going to uh, not be straight. And they're going to call it. And I like that from Valentunas. I'm quite happy for Valentunas in this situation, maybe to take some lower level shots in the chance that you're going to draw some fouls off Toby. If they, if Lithuania can get Toby into foul trouble, there's not a huge amount sitting behind him. They, Slovenia have got Dimets to come in, but he's not at the same level, particularly on the offensive end. Nice pass. Um, Luka Doncic got Fast caught asleep. going to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> oh! Just flirt, literally just slides through the defence and then has the soft throw down. Just quick with that step and Doncic restores the four-point advantage. Kalinidis tries to turn the corner. Blagic doing a great job of getting over that screen. Gligonis. Just with five on the possession, has to put up the tough nice one, hits block. nothing. Chance to run here for Slovenia, where they're really dangerous in this situation. Flag attacks, is it? Nice pass. Great fit, well, Chankar can't get the finish. And Lithuania running the other way, four on three break. Gligonis slows it. Valentunas wants a touch, needs a touch, gets it. And, and that's what we're talking about. Drawing the foul from Toby straight away. Now this causes Coach Mikulic a big issue, right? Coach Mikulic has to decide, is he going to leave Toby on the floor and risk him? Is he going to make that change? Looks like he's going to risk him, that's a big statement. Well, I think the issue for Mike Toby is just got to decide where he wants him to go. He just played him a little straight up and uh, Valentunas is quick enough, strong enough and has just so many options going to the middle. Just can't play him one on one now for the rest of the game. He's going to have to force him to help. And Jonas Valanciunas on the free throw line. And there's the answer to your question. Yeah, I think it's a smart move from my point of view. When I thought he was going to leave him back in, I was going to question that. I think, yes, you're going to lose some of the offensive production by taking Toby out. But at the moment, that's not a concern. You know, you've got other players on the floor that are scoring from the perimeter. You just hope Dimets can stay out of foul trouble defending Valanciunas. Uh, Valentunas can't make the first. And the Shedavida Olympia big man Dimitch is well come if the hour, come if the moment. It's an opportunity for him to make a contribution here that could be absolutely crucial. And 0 for 2. And all of a sudden, Doncic just takes over on the glass. Breaks the defense down, waits for a little contact, little head and shoulder, steps back, count those. Absolute poetry from Doncic in that play. He knew exactly how that was going to play out before it did. Just read the game very well, kept his defender on his back. And like you say, that slight hesitation was all he needed to create the space. Whistle away from the basketball. And it's going to be on Dimitz. Needs to be smarter than that. Well, Jonas Valanciunas will go back to the free throw line after going 0 for 2. So make that 0 for 3. It's quite surprising as well. He's got 80% from the free throw line so far in the, the qualifying tournament. He's dealt quite well with that aspect of the game. So finally gets back to where you'd expect him to be, strokes it. And so it's uh, Budovicius' opportunity to guard Luka Doncic. Breaks him down again, stops to the corner. Lagic wide open for three, is good. Now you've got to stay at home. If you don't stay at home, they're going to find the open man. Yeah, this is the headache you've got if you're uh, Lithuania. You can't help on Doncic, you have to stay. Kalinidis comes up short, great work on the glass, everybody got involved, Pavelbic got involved on the box out. They just put numbers in the wire of Valentunas. 
Doncic trying to really continue this momentum swing. Gets the two. And they have to take the timeout. It's a 10-point lead. Uh, Luka Doncic is, there's a contingent of Slovenian fans in the corner of the gym and he's playing with them. And yeah. he's got exactly the reaction he wants from the home crowd. Yeah. Slovenia leading by 10, 1.47 to go in the first. Timeout, Lithuania. Yeah, two pockets of Slovenian fans. The uh, arena DJs now playing their favorite song, so they're bouncing. And like you say, Doncic is playing off that emotion right now. He loves that. He loves to be the villain as well. You know, 90% of the crowd's Lithuanian here. He's happy to hear the whistles and the boos. It will just charge his batteries further to go again. Well, the 33% from the three-point line is the uh, the issue. Or more at the point, the percentage that Slovenia's shot is the issue. And Luka Doncic has felt the momentum swing. The last few, last three or four possessions down the floor, he's either scored or created for his teammate. And Lithuania simply have to break the momentum. Yeah, they really do. And you can see it, you know, that's a replay of him getting the Slovenian fans hyped. And he does a great job of that as he roars to them. But you can tell as well, he doesn't seem, you know, as worried about other things around him. He's got a smile on his face now when things are going his way. Uh, he really does enjoy the brand of basketball they're playing at the moment. Jakobaitis has checked in, Grigonis again to the corner. Dish is going up, gets the two, nice move. Quick first step, great finish, defense didn't have a chance to adjust. And that's the key for Lithuanian offense as well, when they get those opportunities, they can't hesitate, because they have previously in the week, they've been a little bit concerned about committing. Doncic will back out a little bit, 10 on the possession, gets this full screen, steps back to the three, it's short. That's a rebound by Valanciunas. Yeah, absolutely. Valanciunas owning Dimex then on that rebound. Grigonis attacks it down the middle, kicks it. The open three is no good. And Dimex does a great job on the glass. And that's his second foul, though. Dimex is going to get called for his second. Looked like a good box out for me. I don't know what else Dimex could have done. There are plenty of coaches who will be watching this and said what he did was box out and let his teammate rebound. Let's take a look. Well, there's a little bit of... The hooked arm is the only yeah, thing the that only, I can see yeah. the official calling. But you have to look at it, and I think that, that, that replay was slightly too late for us to see who initiated that hook, who was the person trying to hook the arm in the first place, because really that's who the foul should be called on. Valentunas back into his normal rhythm. Doncic will sit for the last minute of the first quarter and expect him back early in the second. But the concern for Slovenia now is clearly they're two, only two legitimate front court players uh, uh, standing there with two fouls on and we're not even through the first quarter yet. Well, uh, Dimitri will look at this as uh, he's got five to use, but Valentunas is uh, not taking full advantage as he's uh, literally gone four, four, six, or four, no, in fact, he's only gone one for six, sorry. 4-3 by Prepolic, who looks at the official. And uh, I didn't see anything wrong with uh, anything that happened now. Krobat is going to check in as Coach Sekulic is going to use the end of quarter and the last minute of this first quarter to get some rotation into his key men. Yeah, Valanciunas being rested as well as Masulis comes in. And Valanciunas' most impressive stat for me, it's not the 10 points or, or three rebounds, it's five fouls drawn. That's the biggest impact he's had so far. Gregobidas tries to turn the corner. They have to recycle it. Gregobidas. A nice job at defending the roll. But Gregobidas for three just fills it up. And he's been an X factor in this tournament. 10.3 points per game, but more importantly, one of those hidden stats. When he's on the floor, Lithuania are plus 18. Gregobidas will set the back screen and pop. Match up, he'll probably go on the dribble against. Steps back, takes the three, way off, offensive rebound. And they don't get it away at the end of the quarter. Ido Muric could have gone straight back up and they had a chance, but he passed it off. 
And Lithuania, with that late timeout in the first quarter, have really responded well. And they've cut it to a four-point margin. Slovenia have a 28-24 to 24 lead at the end of one. Yeah, and what an amazing first quarter. It almost feels like we've had a game within that first 10 minutes. Uh, and shooting percentages to look at, both teams shooting relatively good percentages, but as you'd expect, it's the perimeter for Slovenia and the interior for Lithuania that are key. Oh, right, let's take a look at the best plays of that first period. And Jonas Valanciunas, as you said during commentary, Mark, has just been the factor that he needs to be for them to actually have an opportunity to win this game. The fouls drawn have been crucial, as you say. If he'd have made some free throws, the game would have been tied up. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it was what we were looking for. It, it doesn't take an expert basketball analysis to do this for Lithuania. They've got to make their big guys pay. And they have so far. Sabonis and Valanciunas. Sabonis only two points picked up a couple of early fouls. But Valanciunas just being an absolute beast. And that's the key for Lithuania. They have to use that advantage they have in size because if they try and get into a shootout with Slovenia in a run and gun game, then this is going to be uh, not the result that about 9,000 people in this arena want to see. Here we go then, start of two. And possession will be with Lithuania, with Jonathan Valentunas with 10 and 3 at the end of one. Kavishis will inbound and Jakobaitis will control things for Lithuania. They trail four, guarded by Nikolic, who's really done a nice job off the bench for Slovenia. Jakobaitis turns the corner, lifts, Nikolic gets a piece. Jagonis gets into that little elbow spot and that's automatic. Absolutely automatic. He just, he could earn a he literally earns a living in that little area. Yeah, he really does. That mid-range jumper is absolutely his wheelhouse, up to seven points now already. And he's done it throughout the tournament. He really has. He's turned up in the moments. He might not be the superstar name for Lithuania, but my goodness me, he's getting the job done for them. Well, Jakobaitis picks up the first foul as he went for a little bit too much with uh, Nikolic outside. Pelvic curls, gets in there, kicks to the corner. Nikolic open for three, is short. And he has had his moments where he's struggled from the perimeter. One of the few that has, really. Nikobaitis on the catch, plays on the catch. They get it to the corner, wide open for three, in the book. <laughs> Bukovicius off the bench has been so productive for Lithuania. Stroke that three. Selvich again takes it on the dribble, turns it over. Three on two break. Jakobaitis with a bump, doesn't get the roll, and will go to the free throw line. And Lithuania with a one-point lead and all the momentum. And Propelbicu, earlier in this tournament, was never passing those shots off. He was stopping and scoring in gaps, just turns it over. And the great thing for Lithuania, bodies down the floor. Yeah, and, yeah, completely. And what we've had here is a very big swing. Momentum away from Slovenia towards Lithuania, and both of these teams play well in, with momentum and with confidence. You saw Ben just there, smart move, maybe a pace too early. Could have drawn Nuric across a little bit more before handing it off. But again, looking great on the uh, transition. Oh, Lucas Lekovicius checks in, Gregonis will sit. And they're quick now in the, in the one and two spots. If you only, they have a lot of foot speed defensively. And without uh, Doncic in the game, that's been paying dividends. Here is Nikolic, gets the early screen in, act, in some action. Pelvic will step. There's too much help there. Dimic gets fouled as, he's, as he caught the ball. And I, to me, for all the world, it looked like uh, that uh, Ben Juice was there. But whether he reached, who knows? Oh, yeah, just yeah, slightly did. late, right? He looked, he'd read it so well. He'd read where the pass was going to go, but a split second too late, and you can see the reaction from Coach. Maskalunis, he knows as well that it was a slight second late. Toby's back in the game. Pelvic gets the screen, turns the corner, gets in the lane. Little bank shot for two. And 
quite rightly, Coach Shakulin wants to know why the hip's not caught, and there was a fair amount of contact, but there's been a fair amount of contact everywhere, so... Jacobidis plays at a pace, needs a pass now, finds one. It's just action, absolute perpetual action. Nice fight, Javisius on the first step, catches. You're gonna have to put it up, there's no time on the clock, they take a tough one. And Muric cleans up on the glass. If I'm coach Mascalunas now, I'm calling it, and he absolutely is, he's saying, bring your Valanchunas back in. As soon as I see Toby on the floor, I'm putting my big man back in to terrorise him. pitch with easy two, no help. And that's going to be one of the things you're going to have to live with if you're in They can't overhelp. Great finish by Papelic. But the five they have on the floor at the moment doesn't particularly have a rim protector. So that's when Slovenia need to go to the basket. They don't have a natural rim protector. Masulis, a young guy that they're moulding into a four, but he's not quite there yet. Probat picks up the personal. Just a little bit too much contact. And Jonas Valanciunas, much to the delight of about 9,500 people is back in the game. 7.52 to go in the half. Slovenia back with the two-point advances. Jagabaitis is actually standing still for a second. Puts it on the floor, in the lane. Extra pass, wide open. Drop the three. Then juice with time, space, and that's all he needs to knock it down. He makes the three. Slovenia want to take the timeout, and I'd be amazed if Luka Doncic doesn't come back at the end of this timeout. 33 to 32. We've got a game. Yeah, it's been a big second quarter already for Lithuania. Nine to four start for them. Um, and it's only going to get worse. Valentunas has been sat on the bench for most of that nine to four start. So it's uh, just going to level up again now. Interesting to see how long Doncic stays out of the action. I don't think he'll be for very long. Well, so far, as we see the uh, field goal percentages so far in this uh, tournament, they'd be starting to come back now. The start, you know, the Doncic will come back, Chankar will come back. So, and then they finish the half with pretty much their starters. Yeah, and the key for me is Toby is going to have a tough night of it. He might get in foul trouble, but I want to capitalise on the time he's going to be on the floor. I want Luca next to him. They've developed a great little one-two punch. Don't have them separated. You know, if Toby is going to get in foul trouble, the minutes he's on the floor, I want him next to Doncic to capitalise to its fullest. Well, they start bringing back the starters as uh, Luka Doncic joins Mike Toby on the floor. Propelvich is like a starter because he has that uh, ability to score in a hurry, and it's just a rotation and 40-minute thing for Coach Sekulic. Interesting to see down the defensive end how they try and go at Toby. But they won't have that worry for the next few seconds as Luka Doncic on the dribble. Spins to the middle, gets in the lane, second move, off the glass, and one. You can't play him one-on-one, -on -one, and that's the dilemma you keep highlighting. If you play him one-on-one, -on -one, he's going to score. If you, play, if you start to overhelp, he's going to find the open man. Pick your poison time. Yeah, it is. And you look at that play there, it's, it, you know, it's from a coaching perspective, it's absolutely beautiful. He's in complete control of every aspect of his body position throughout the entire play. Yes, Luka doesn't need, you know, doesn't play 100 miles an hour, but everything is purposeful. There's a reason to every movement he makes, and most of the time it's to try and draw the foul. Doncic on the free throw line. Completes the three-point play. And Slovenia back up two. Already a lot of lead changes in the game. It's just what you'd expect for a game for an Olympic ticket. Valentunas comes back to the jumper this time, doesn't get the roll. Surprised he caught it on this side of the floor. Doncic in the lane, Toby wide open, turns down the three, reverses it. Kropelic wraps the pass. Muric for three is off. Sabon is back in the game. Gavicius down the floor, a little push shot for two in transition. Ties it at 35 and we have a new ball game with 6.40 to go in the half. And that's what Lukavicius brings to the game as well. He transitions so quickly off the ball that you know he's going to be there. Pelic lines up the deep three and just drains it. 
This, is get, this game is living up to every ounce of pre-game hype we've had, and it's rare that you get that in professional sports. We are absolutely being treated in front of us at the moment. Sabonis out top. They've not looked to go high-low with the two bigs, but uh, obviously an option in the lock. Gagabaitis, again, at speed, has to back out. A lot of dribble with not a lot of purpose. Now he goes with a floater for two and makes it. Yeah, I think he sell, saved himself a, a, a bit of an earful for Valanciunas. If he hadn't scored that one, I think the big man would have been saying a little bit less dribbling, a little bit more movement of the ball. Doncic, Pavlic having made one, rims it out. But Lithuania can't give up on that perimeter defence. You know, even if it's a lost cause, they've got to chase out. That's the bonus in, the, in this block. Foul on the plate. And they're going to go with shots. I'm not sure that looked on the floor to me was still in the dribble, but they're gonna they're gonna go for shots. And again, I think you could have picked either Prova or Muric there for the foul. And this is the great thing you've got with Sabonis. He's not just a big guy, he has got a very consistent handle. He protects the ball pretty well and can take a good dribble uh, towards the basket. So apart from Blazic, who has some foul trouble, uh, Slovenia restored the starting lineup. Lithuania not far off if Kalinidis comes back. And it's going to be interesting to see how long and whether or not Lithuania leave the two bigs in for the rest of this, or for as long as they can in this quarter. And the free throw situation is beginning to be a real negative for Lithuania. They're tied up and they've missed so many opportunities already from the free throw line. Doncic in the lane, draws contact and one. And Doncic knows that his country need him now. He's, he knows that his team need them. You know, he needs to take the reins a little bit closer and uh, control the game and moves like that. They're just unstoppable. He has great upper body strength, draws the contact, and again, in complete control as he rolls to the basket. Well, it's 40 to 38. Still five, nearly five and a half minutes still remain in the half. And I, I do, you know, the phrase of picking your poison is sometimes overused, but either they're going to have to get the ball out of his hands or they're going to have to make him take tough shots without fouling him and ask someone else in a blue uniform to shoot the ball. Because if it carries on like this, Doncic will probably win it on his own. Inside, outside option turned down by Valanciunas. Backs in, Toby forces into the baseline which he goes to the jump shot if he has to go that way. Sabonis on the glass for two. And that's the problem they've got with Chanchar having to play back to the basket defense, post defense against Bonus. That's not his wheelhouse. That's not what he wants to be doing. Doncic goes upstairs to Toby, who has to wait for it to come down. Takes the lean away jumper is no good. And Lithuania on this possession could lead it. Kalanidis. I'm coach Mascalunis now, though. I'm thinking about taking Valanciunas out of the game. He's looking to be a little bit fatigued. Sabonis down low. They're going to try and force him to the baseline. They do. Goes up strong off the glass for two. If you're going to force him there, you've got to go help. Doncic. Just so, so sweet with a nice two at the ring and ties it at 42. And every time at the moment, Lithuania are falling for that little shoulder drop as he looks like he's going to go back and then returns towards the basket. They just need to stay true and defend the, defend the hoop. Great hands by Chan Cha. Puts it on the floor, goes at Sabonis with a right hand. Great defense by Sabonis. This would not give him the easy look. Yeah, I don't, I don't hate the offense there from Chancho as well. He's tried to use the advantage that he sees it as, maybe quick, quicker foot speed than Sabonis, but Sabonis was a, more than a match for it. Kalinidis outside, looks down low. Valentinus again. Now they let him go to the middle, though. Well, he goes with the left hand and looks uh, longingly at the official, gets no love. Yeah, for me, it's time to take Valentinus out, give him a breather, and then bring him back in, revitalize. Doncic draws oh! another foul. Gets the two and will go to the free throw line. And I, I, I'm going to say it again, at some point they're going to have to make a different decision. Because he is, at the moment, unstoppable. Yeah, this is quickly turning into the Luka Doncic show. Uh, already up to 15 points, four rebounds, and five assists in 13 minutes of play. The thing you've got is, I don't know how you stop him. 
I'm sitting there if I'm coach to Coolidge and I'm thinking, how do we stop him? Well, it, do we double across and yeah. then risk the shot? Are yeah. we now picking the poison that we're going to give up the open perimeter shot? Well, you, you, don't, have, you, you, you don't have to give it up. You just got to react to once he's got rid of it, you have to work hard to close out and then come out of that help. Hey, it's ridiculously difficult. But at the moment, ridiculously difficult is better than just letting him do what he wants. Yeah. If you're picking between ridiculously difficult and damn near impossible, you'd go ridiculously you go. difficult. A possibility <laughs> to win that way yeah. or, or just watch him look like the superstar he is. So Slovenia had their starting lineup back in the game with 3.19 to go. Kalinidis in the lane, gets bumped, that'll be Toby's third. And that's a tough call on Toby as well, because the only reason he's bumped into Kalinidis is because he, he had a bump himself. But it looks like they're going to trust him and keep him in the game. I'm not sure. It's a difficult one, because I understand why, because, you know, Kosa Kulic is saying, uh, we're on a roll. Let's see if we can keep this momentum going. While you're in the game, it does draw some attention away from Doncic. You know, they are paying you more attention. We change that, maybe they can help on Luka a little bit harder. Yeah, a poor perimeter defense really exposed him as well. Blazic was poor on the ball defense, allowed Kalininas to go down the middle. So, just a really tough decision. Sekulic, I think, is going to go. going to have to go to Dimitri, but he's going to roll the dice. No, he's going to pull him back. Yeah, I think he wants him to play offense, and then he'll try and swap him out. Maka Blazic and Luka Doncic, who will take the ball screen. Fills the help, leans back for two, is way short. Much better. Much better because the post defense from Lithuania closed the lane up. They didn't just leave the defender, the face defender, on their own with Luka. They did close that, and there was a little bit more trust. The defend defensive assignment was happy to stay true. And Tas Kalinidis was having his, the game of the, the tournament for him so far. has been very, very efficient and effective. Again, turns the corner to the corner. A little ball fake, the flyby. Kalinidis wide open for three. Is along. Doncic can't collect, but Dimic does. And he gives it up early. Lagic for two. He blows it. And Chankar keeps it alive. Blazic for three. He's been perfect from the perimeter. That's his first miss. Kalininas gives it up. Sabonis will advance it. Kalininas says, give it back to me. Drops it inside. Sabonis can't handle that. There was no control. No, it was a bad decision by Kalinietis. He left his feet, and uh, that's kind of 101 for coaching, right? Stay on your feet when you're looking to pass the ball. Doncic in the lane for two. Matt, he's not going to He's not gonna not take the layup. Don't take the look off. No. Absolutely not. From Sabonis' point of view, that was just a flat-out mistake. Step across and fill the lane. You know, again, pick your poison. Do you yep. want Luca taking the shot, or do you want someone else taking the shot? Right now, anyone but Luca. Anyone. And if, if you can, rotate away so the pass is a, is, a, is a skip, and you've got a chance to rotate. All of this is fine in the coaching book, but when you've got the quality they have on the perimeter, it's a tough ask. Sabonis. We go on this back in, steps back for the three, is fouled. Yeah. Doesn't get the roll, and Blasic is going to pick up his third as well. Yeah, it's the right call by the officials, and Blasic just a little bit over keen on the chase out. But again, it's run through the screen. When there's a good screen at the top, it creates that separation that the shooters need. And, you know, Sabonis and Valanchunis, they set big screens. But Blasic, who has apologized to Coach Sekulic every time he's fouled, and has continued to foul, sits down. <laughs> and, he's, and, the, and the frustration for Coach is he's only missed one shot from the perimeter. Yeah, and that's look, tough. He looked really in rhythm. They don't have an issue because Propelic, Propelic will check in. And meantime, Grigolnes, who is a factor in this game offensively already, starts to have and accumulate even more positive stats. I also like this change from Coach Mascalunas. He's taken Sabonis out and brought in Valanchunis. I'm looking forward to seeing what Valanchunis can do to Dimets. You know, can he push him into foul trouble as well? Can he get Dimets into his third foul? Because then Slovenia looked very, very shaky, considering we've still got pretty much 22 minutes left. And the free throw is good. One-point game, Slovenia still have it. Propelic will take over from Doncic to the corner. Shankar, who's yet to get going, still struggles, and it didn't look that 
fluid from the perimeter. Had the ankle issue yesterday, but seems sound, but the uh, rhythm not quite there. Gligonis will take the Valentina screen and move it on. The open three is good. And the reaction from the arena is unreal right now. Oh, Ben Juice with those up with his feet set has looked pretty impressive. Doncic thinks about the three, wants it back. And there's a foul on the plate. And just a, going for a little bit too much as Kalinidis goes down. And I think it was just a little overexcitement, the fact that they'd forced the ball out of Doncic's hands. They wanted to try and capitalize while they could. But uh, initially, uh, Bukava just did the right thing. It was good defense. They forced Slovenia to change their shape. Uh, Genelidis will check in, and he will replace Kukovicius. Meanwhile, Dimec is on the free throw line. <laughs> Dimec took a long time, that's always a fairly negative indicator of where his mind is. It took a long time to actually release the basketball. Makes the second. This crowd is living this game. It's just Yeah, absolutely every bounce they're living right now. It's a wonderful to be in after so long without crowds. This is a, a real treat. Kalinidis goes with a tough one, doesn't get it to go. They just forced him off the drive lane. Doncic will push. Dlagic in transition, easy two, he blew it, just slipped out of his hand. Dimic is trying to try and clean up the mess and draws contact. And Joran Dlagic is like, what happened there? And you could see it just slip out of his hands as he tried to release it. But Val Valentunas needs to be careful now because he did this yesterday and ended up picking, a, picking up a technical foul. And, in, you know, the time he got it yesterday, it didn't matter. It will matter today. He needs to be available for every last second of this game. Well, both uh, Dragic and Donic off shot are uh, down on their haunches, but uh, I think that's just uh, uh, not going to be a factor. Dimec, this is the first again, chance to tie the game at 49. And uh, makes the second. Maybe you should shoot the second one first. <laughs> <laughs> Might go two for two. Gligonis with a little push off. No, nothing to call there. Gligonis in that little area he just lives in. The wide open three again is long this time. And Valentunas somehow, as a team, Slovenia come down with, a, with the ball. And I love what Dimitz brings. It's just hustle and heart. Doncic. A little, a little caught up with uh, Kalnedis in the lane, gets hit, and one. I, I, see no, I see no issue with the call, he gets hit on the arm on the way up, makes the two and goes to the free throw line. The thing is, the defence was perfect, bar a split second, we'll see it now, look at the hands come down from Benjus. Yeah. They're not straight up, you can put them back to straight up, but that's not the point, you've pushed your hands forward within the middle of the key phase of the play. And there was absolute contact on the elbow. Luka Doncic loving the challenge at the moment. Chance to make this a three-point game. And I think yeah, there has to be moments in this game where you, you do control yourself, coach-wise and player-wise. There's enough emotion in the gym for everybody. It's easy for me and you. We're sitting here loving the game. <laughs> we you are know? in seventh heaven right now, right? Uh, Looks like it's going to be a smart play by coach uh, Sekulic, though. He's going to bring Nikolic in and take Doncic out oh, in yeah. the last 26. Doncic does need to play defence. He's not a bad defender, but he's not going to bring anything different than Nikolic won't. He's got to hope he makes the throw, which he does, and he'll sit. And he leaves with his team with a three-point advantage, 52 to 49 with 26 seconds. Doncic remaining leads, in the half. Doncic leads with 21 points, six rebounds and five assists. But he has played 17 minutes. This is by far and away, as you would expect, the longest he's played within any game.
and Kalinidis tells Grigonis, hey, we're not going to give him another chance to get it. There's only going to be a two, three second differential. Let's take our time here. Grigonis, they keep him on the sideline, gets in the lane, kicks it. Kalinidis back to Grigonis, feet set, attacks it. Kalinidis for three, it's good. And they take the halfway line from Dragic, which is off. And we reach the half. A phenomenal half of basketball, an Olympic ticket on the line. And at half time here in Kaunas, in front of a full house, Lithuania and Slovenia are locked at 52. What an unbelievable first half, kind of pinching myself to check it's real. Both teams playing to, to their potential. Slovenia, five from 16, their shooting percentage is down. Lithuania actually the better perimeter shooting team, but 52 apiece at the half. A high scoring game just as we wanted. And you look at the stats, not a huge amount to separate them. Slovenia, as you would expect, heavily leaning on Doncic offensively though. Well, we're gonna get a look at the best plays of that first half in a moment. But uh, the top scorer is Valanciunas with 10, which uh, if it had made half the free throws he missed would have been significantly more. Uh, Doncic with 21 for Slovenia. So let's have a look at the best plays of that first half. And I'll, I'll just say one thing, uh, Mark, while, while these are going. A tied up game and you shoot 53% from the three throw line. If you miss out on the Olympic Games because you can't make free throws, it's going to haunt you. Yeah, it really is. You know, it really is. You, maybe you can shrug them off in the first half, but as the game goes on, they become even more and more important. The other statistic to look at there from uh, Lithuania, uh, from Slovenia's point of view, only five made threes. They've been averaging them 16 makes from outside in this game. So you can look at it two ways. One, Slovenia aren't getting what they want, but if I'm Lithuania, I'm very much sitting there thinking, there is a phase in this game where Slovenia will start lining up from outside. We'll do what we can do, but it's still likely they're gonna start pouring in points from outside. How are we gonna react to that situation? Well, that's the dilemma you've raised. Uh, throughout the first half. You know, Doncic with 21 and more minutes. If he's getting 21, they aren't going to shoot the three, and that's because they're not leaving the three. But that's what we talked about before the game. Yep. You know, make that decision, because if you leave, and when they have the open threes they've made, they've been wide open. So, okay, if Doncic makes two, great, we're not giving up the three. And if that's the philosophy, fine, live with it. Don't foul him on the drive. <laughs> <laughs> Don't send him to the line to make it a three-point play. Absolutely. And it's like, uh, and, and, and it, what uh, coach has said before the game was that we can't foul him. We can't foul him as often as other teams have fouled him. And the one thing that his, his strategy has broken down on is the number of times Doncic has gone to the free throw line. Yeah, absolutely. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Doncic has already drawn six fouls. Uh, and that tells you a lot. But that's how he plays the game. He gets his defender onto his hip, onto his back. And then he just manipulates him. He becomes the puppet master, really, in that situation. But as you say, Lithuania can't have that the case. We've seen several situations where Doncic has broken. He's used the pick and roll well. But the rim protector has stepped away and not just filled the lane. You have to commit to it. You know, we said it. Do you want Luka taking the shot, or do you want to force Luka to have to pass off and let someone else take? He scored 21 in the first half. Pretty much that tells you your answer. Well, as you say, though, that happens when you leave people alone. And, and that's... That they've got to stick with one or the other in terms of the decision. And at the moment, you've got to say they're tied up at 52. If they'd have made the free throws, if they'd made a reasonable percentage of the free throws, Lithuania would have had a four or five point lead here. And, you know, it's a 52 52 game. We are, st we are talking about 40 minute games here. We're not, you know, it's not as if uh, that's the norm. We'll be back soon for the second half. And there may well still be a chance for Brazil. Alex. He's going to heave it from centre court. He has done everything here in split at this tournament. The 41-year-old eternal youth on the Adriatic. Doncic through traffic for two. Oh, what a move. Just puts Chario on skates as he goes to the basket. Look at this play. Steps in, puts the brakes on, puts the skids on Chario and gets the score. Going to have extended minutes if uh, Kalanidis' injuries are an issue. Sabonis! Oh! Oh! Threw that down on the far side of the ring. Quick steal or a foul. And then a foul. 
Oh, there's the steal. There's the steal. Wiggins has it. Cannon has a chance to tie. Wiggins for three. It's short. Oh. Andrew Wiggins ties the game. Can you believe it? 94 all with 10 to play. 10 points in 40 seconds. Five to shoot. Sadoransky turns. Sadoransky off over Dart. Banks it in with 1.4 remaining. Tomas Sadoransky clutch for the Czech Republic. We have walked this land for a long time. We know how far we've gone and we're sure of how far we can go. Unity is not just a word here. It's not just a spirit in this sport. It's the way we all move. We are proud of our art, country, family, language and culture. We are united by basketball. Welcome to FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup 2022.
factors in this second half because as, as great a player as Luka Doncic is, for him to carry this whole team, and he's not had to carry it so far. Coach, Luka Doncic putting very impressive numbers in the first half with him controlling the game rhythm. Slovenia lost the ball only once in the first 20 minutes. Do you believe you need to force more turnovers for Slovenia in order to get a ticket to Tokyo? Not just the turnovers, you know, we need to play better defense. 52 points is, is, is not a good defense for us. So, uh, you know, we're trying to do our best, you know, but, you know, Luka is Luka, but we will keep pushing, we will keep trying, you know, and that's it, better defense. Appreciate your time, coach. Uh, Mark, the, the, the question is, do they want Luka to carry on scoring and have 40 at the end of the game? Is that the way they think they might be able to win the game? Or is it going to be someone else? They're going to have to pull someone else to shoot? I think that's the bigger question because I don't think they can stop Luka. No, I don't think they can either. I think it is kind of, to a certain degree, you're going to try and limit him as best you can, but it's almost the mindset of let Luka have what Luka has. You know, you're going to give him what he gets and then what you're going to try and do is chip away the pieces that surround him. You know, ultimately, if they can force either of Toby or Dimets out of the game, you know, on five fouls, they're both on three fouls at the moment, I think. Or no, Dimets isn't, is he? No, he's on uh, two. Dimets on two. Yeah. But if they can force further foul trouble, the pieces start falling away from Luca. And as much as Luca can win your games, he isn't going to do it all in his own. He is going to need something from the front court, be it on the defensive end alone. Is uh, they're going to need contribution to stop Valentinus and Sabonis just going to work? Yeah, I know, just that, you know, they just don't send him to the free throw line. If he's going to make tough shots, make him make tough shots. And, you know, you take away the M1s and you take away the M1s and free throws and, and you're potentially looking at a Lithuania lead of seven to eight points. Yeah, absolutely. And make it, as you made the point in the first half, Lithuania making their own free throws. Yeah, you know, absolutely. They're in a double digit lead if they can do that. But, you know, Coach Maskalunis stating the obvious, we just need better defense. So far in the qualifiers, Lithuania have only conceded 64 points a game. They've given up 52 in the first half expectations were when you play Slovenia you're going to give up a lot of points but I'm not sure Lithuania want to get into the 100 plus point game that's no. not where they want to be they'd want to grind this out now and keep it down to a, a, a sub 90 point game and I'd see Lithuania you know if that's the case I'm saying Lithuania are going to win if they get into the hundreds the 110s then uh, the favor probably falls more towards Slovenia because they are happier getting into that higher paced higher tempo uh, structure well, it's going to be intriguing. We said it was going to be a great one. Well, 11,500 people are in the Zalgiro Arena. And that, you know, just being able to say that is great. And uh, obviously, the way the Lithuanian government has, uh, you know, allowed that to happen and managing that process, everyone's wearing their face mask, et cetera, et cetera. But 11,500 people are witnessing this firsthand. And that's, this country lives on this sport and this sport lives on this country and this, they're really now 20 minutes away from another appearance at the Olympic Games. They do not want to be the team that's the first team not to get there. And this is the thing from my point of view, I'm getting caught up in this game. I keep forgetting the fact that they're playing to go to the Olympics. You know, you're getting caught in just how great this game is, but you're absolutely right. Once we get deeper in that fourth quarter, that's going to start playing on the players' minds as well. From Lithuania's perspective, they've never missed out. From Slovenia's perspective, they could be history makers and be the first ever team to do it for their country. Well, and the other last last thing before we get going is, you know, we've talked a lot about Lithuanian defence, but because Slovenia have had to pack the middle again, Lithuania are making more threes on those on the inside-outside option than they've made so far in this tournament. If they keep making those threes, they're right in the game. But they're a 33% three-point shoot, uh, three shooting team across this competition so far. Are they the 40% that shot yesterday against Poland, or are they the 30% team that shot for the rest of the tournament? It's almost that could be the decisive stat. So 11 and a half thousand people. No one's, no one's not got back to the seat for this one, but rest assured. 20 minutes away from a ticket to Tokyo. Both sets of players want to be on that plane. 20 minutes to decide who it's going to be. 52 apiece. Luka Doncic puts it on the floor. 
Inside, outside the open three. Chankar trying to get going and does straight off the bat. Great decision by Doncic to get the man the open look. And that could be important. Chanchal does need to play a part on the offensive end. He only scored two in the first half, so getting him warmed up early on could uh, pay dividends for Slovenia. There's a whistle away from the basketball, I think. And Nikolic is starting because they, they're trying to share that foul trouble out. Blazic had three on the bench. So, uh, he's made one of those calls right at the beginning of the game as well. They've made another one right at the beginning of the half. Well, Toby did a great job just to be big. Sabonis will reverse it. Gregonis is short. Shankar, after scoring the three, gets a defensive rebound stat. Great start to the half for him. Doncic. Toby. Well, they had Shankar open straight away, turned it down. Doncic turns the corner. Oh, a little head and shoulder fake, gets to the ring. Inside, outside, Toby for three. It's good. And how, just on the flick of a switch, Slovenia have changed their offense now. So now no longer is it just Doncic, the focal point. He's turning around and going, you know, I can score. Guess what? I can feed the ball as well. Two early assists, two big threes, and the game momentum changes completely again. But they had a way of playing in the first half that said, we're going to ask him to make tough plays. Yeah. They leave it, they, they don't, they go away from that, they stand in the keyway, and they've given up wide open looks. That's not tougher defense. That's deciding that they're going to ask other people to score. Yeah, absolutely. They need to stay in front of Luca. They need to put a foot across the lane. Um, once, he, once he's in the paint, then pretty much it's easy pickings. Does he want to score himself, or is he going to find one of the spotters on, on the perimeter? Like you say, I'm sure this is what uh, Coach Mascalunas is saying now, exactly that. Where's the intensity? Where's the aggression? Oh, a 6-0 start, and he has to burn a timeout inside the first minute of the third quarter. I've got to love the fact he has, he, there's none of this, oh, wait, I'll hold it. I've got a problem. We have, we've come out flat. I'm taking it. We're going to get, we've got to get going right now. Because they've got so many players who can make big plays, Slovenia. Coming back against them again. They've already come back once from a double-digit margin. Coming back again is going to be a tough ask. Big, big possession coming out of the timeout for Lithuania. Their problems are defensive, but they have to tick it over. Here they go. Gleonis will have the basketball on the wrong end of the six-point margin. The bonus with a high screen, they don't really look to attack that. Valentunas at the elbow, puts it on the floor with a left. Ooh, and they don't need to get caught up with the confrontation with the official. Wouldn't mind seeing it again. Nikolic is a little disappointed in the call, should we say. Whether that's a foul or not, I still love the direction for Valentunas. Get the ball and go at them cause problems, you know, straight away, see if they can cause bigger problems. Zone out of bounds for Slovenia, the 2-3. They're going to go down to the corner and try and leave people under the ring to deal with the glass. The long three is no good, ball's bouncing around. Well, it's going to end up in Luka Doncic's hands. And he's taking a little spell away from the ball. Toby's the man to reverse to, through. Chankar goes back and fakes the dive and gets it to Doncic. Doncic in his own time and space over his head. Chanchar again for three. That is unreal play. The pass by Doncic is just rude on every level. <laughs> Absolutely rude and disrespectful on every level, but I love it. Kalanidis. Gregonis. First half, I think, would have stopped and popped that one. Now turns the corner, gets into the keyway. Kalanidis deep on the shot clock, five remaining. Gregonis going the wrong way. Kalanidis got to put it up. A little runner off the glass for two. And all the years of experience, they're going the other way. Easy two. Luggage. And that's Slovenia from earlier in the competition. Yeah, it really is. And that's the scary Slovenia. That's the one that terrifies. That's the one that will give you nightmares. Seven point game. Energy sucked out of the arena. Talonidis gets it into the half court. Grigonis gets it down low. Toby's just got to stay clean. Valentunas inside out, the extra pass, wide open three, he's got to go, and does! Great ball movement. Vukovicius with his feet set, he's been excellent all game. Doncic, little fake and one. 
and they have to change something. Lithuania can't carry on on the same vein. For me, the thing they, get, they have to change is they have to say to the guard, if you're on the hip, then you're going to have to switch out and let the big man step across into the lane. You know, they're in a position, a fortunate position. Valanciunas is only on two fouls. Sabonis is on two fouls. Let the big guy fill the lane. You have to do that. Yes, Doncic is going to pass out of it, but what are you going to do? Keep ending up in this situation where Doncic makes a three-point play again. I'm not sure the point that Coach Sekulic is trying to make here. Um, he got the call. Um, and I think they may be saying there's a problem with the scoreboard. I can't believe there's a problem with the scoreboard. There's the over-the-top. Yeah, they've yeah. just corrected the scoreboard now. Oh, yeah, it's only a case of... Uh, it's, a bit delayed, that's yeah. all. Hey, it's been a long time since the table's had to work in front of 11,000 people. There's a bit of nerve. But his assistant coaches are on it. Oh, they're, hey. they're absolutely on it. Hey, <laughs> there's a, that, that everyone's doing the job. You know, if you've got that place on the bench, <laughs> there's some... Uh, there's some programs around the world that take note. You know, if you've got people on there, everyone's doing the job. Even at this level, the little things count. Doncic to complete the three-point play, which he does. Dangerous, dangerous moments here for Lithuania. Yeah, they can't let this extend much further. They've already fought their way back from a double-digit deficit before. Uh, can they do it twice against Slovenia? I'm not sure. Blagic asked, what's the foul for? There was contact. And I think the referees are in a moment now where they, um, yeah. they may try and keep this a little under control, which is dangerous for if you're Mike Toby now. You don't want a little touch foul called on you. Slovenia already committed three fouls. They do not want to ruin this start by putting themselves in a hole. Valanciunas just absolutely beasted Toby to the glass. Yeah, he did, and Toby has no choice. He can't put hands on him, he can't really challenge at the ring, he can just play, you know, medium-level defense. Toby turns down the three, Valen uh, Doncic doesn't and just drains it. Watch and just love Luka Doncic. This is unreal, he's getting close to unconscious levels now. Ten-point lead, Slovenia just pouring in points. Whistle on the play, and that'll be the fourth team foul. And the only negative at this third quarter is that Slovenia already now slip into the penalty. Yeah, the only the only benefit is obviously when you're only shooting 53%. Most of the misses, though, did come out of the hands of Valanciunas in that first half. Valanciunas is the release. Glagonis in Glagonis land, kicks it. Kalinas thinks about the three, puts it up after the jab step, which always worries me. And that's a foul by Kalinas. Didn't like the situation that he was looking at. The other aspect I'm really enjoying from Slovenia's point of view, and this is a really clever thing to do, Doncic is being matched up against whoever is the least active uh, offensive player for Lithuania. So he's basically at the moment getting 10, 15 seconds oh, yeah. breather. And every ounce of energy he's got is being played on the offensive end. If I'm Lithuania, they need to correct that. You know, they need, Doncic has played a long season, a tough season. Let's try and let fatigue play a part. Nice pass, Toby down the middle with a flush. Uh, he's just picking options. It's a clinic. 71 of 59. Lithuania have to find a way to stem the flow of points. They've got to stop the bleeding at the offensive end. At the defensive end for them. Baseline penetration in the lane. Kick. They turn down the three and put it on the floor. Doncic should be called for the foul on the closeout. But again, you've got to love the way that Slovenia then rotated out and forced the ball on the floor. No, no, no more standstill threes for Lithuania. They have to work hard, but the fouls will send them to the free throw line. Yeah, only Doncic's first foul, and I think that kind of reaffirms the point I was making before that he's not been asked to play a huge Absolutely. amount of defense so far. Still only an 11-point game with this to go. Let's not, let's not get too carried away here. I mean, they've just had a perfect start to this third quarter. Lithuania have to ride it out get some stops, and then just get themselves back into their, their, their own offensive rhythm. And Jakobaitis in the game. And the quickness they have in the backcourt's got it to start to generate things at the defensive end. Here's Doncic. It has to be the defensive end at the moment. Slovenia tracking for a 40-point quarter. Now Chankar outside, puts it on the floor, draws contact. They're going to call the travel. Then you've got to give a lot of credit to Sabonis for the closeout. 
Dunches and his uh, ongoing <laughs> relationship with the referees gets deeper. <laughs> it does. They're almost on Christmas card level now, I think. 71 to 60, Lithuania. Just got to work this one through. This period of the game, they've got to stay with it. Sabonis tries to go to the inside and does, doesn't get the roll. And Doncic gets another stat, this time a defensive rebound. And Toby's doing really well because he's playing the perfect level of defense for a man who's in foul trouble. He's putting everything he can in without overcommitting. Doncic, they send two at him. Now he breaks it down and kicks it. Chanchar puts it on the floor, five on the possession. Chanchar in the lane for two, doesn't get the two, but Toby's on the glass, great hands. Oh, he's gonna, they're going to call the foul, the ticky-tack foul. That could be a game changer. That truly could be a game changer. After all I was saying about Toby on the last yeah, possession. Let's, let's have a look at it. That's, uh, that's that play by Budovicius could be the most important play of the game. <laughs> yeah, it really could because it changes the dynamic now. It really does. The other thing I like from Lithuania on that that possession is just flashing a double team. So Jukobai just jumped across and jumped back, and I think that just put Doncic. Off, off stride a little bit. Am I facing a double team or not? He wasn't quite sure. So I like that that concept of just jumping but then retreating back again. Well, Anas Budovicius out there drawing the foul, which could be, as, as you said, one of the key moments of the game. Can really compound that by making the throws and get this back to a single-digit game. Makes the first. And with the simplicity of his free throw action, uh, you can never see him missing. And the three-throw game for Lithuania now is going to be key. They've absolutely got to, got to pick up the pace on the three-throw side of things. So two for two, and Tobe on the, Tobe on the bench. Doncic. Dimec. Dimec is going to have to put in a shift here. Doncic comes back, little curl, finds a little space, steps back for two. Doesn't get it to go. Defensive rebound. And a chance for Gagonis to push the basketball. Sabonis is down early and really needs it and gets a touch. But they push him off the block a little. Now he's got to work for his two. Goes to the baseline. Little turnaround jump shot is good. And they're each in their way back in. Yeah, they really are. And for Slovenia now, you're going to look at Doncic change from provider to scorer. Without Toby on the floor, I think the scoring will come from Doncic's hands far more now. Lazic is back in. Luka goes up against Sabonis, takes the contact, doesn't get the drop. Wants a little help from the official, doesn't get it. Gligonis, it's a seven-point game, chance to cut this to a four or five-point game, inside, outside. Gligonis spending a lot of time with the ball, comes off it, steps back. Dimesh does a great job of getting a hand up on it. And they come down with it, easy two after the hard work. And if you want to put energy into a crowd, play at the defensive end. Huge play, just effort plays by Lithuania, and they have dragged themselves right back in this. Timeout, Slovenia. Doncic wants to talk to the official. Yeah, he does, he needs to be really careful. And, I, and to an extent, it doesn't matter how much we think he may have a case, it's done. We're back at 71-66 game, Slovenia timeout. And this is the last thing that Slovenia want. They don't want a full-flowing arena of over 10,000 Lithuanians urging their team on, because the momentum now has switched. Although Slovenia still hold a five-point lead, that foul on Toby was mammoth. It was a huge foul, and so far away from his own basket as well. It's changed the dynamic of the game again, and Doncic just needs to make sure that his head is fully focused at the game and not the officials. Well, Lithuania is still shooting 80% from two-point range. The, the, offensive, the offensive options are there, they can score at will, and then they just have to do what they've done at the defensive end, just a, a little change up, as you said, fake the double team, just change the, the momentum. Although, in saying that, they've got some pretty decent looks that they just happen to have missed on the last three or four attempts. Doncic from two feet is normally an out one. So Lithuania up the floor, out the timeout. It's a little bit token, but uh, just to have a little look, they see the little fake from uh, Gligonis. Blazic in action. Doncic 
They can't become so focused on Luca. Got to move the basketball now. Eight on the possession. Steps back. Great look. The Chantar can't. They can't handle it. Moritz. They can't handle the pass. No, it's a perfect read by Gregonis on the defensive end. Defensive end. He saw what was coming and read the passing lane well. Sabonis needs touches with the ball. Not necessarily on the three-point line. They're going to go handoff. They turn down the handoff because the defense takes it away. Gregonis in the lane. Gets a little bump. The open three is good. The game is completely flipped again. An unbelievable scenes in the arena right now. Get the riders with a three. Doncic puts it on the floor, inside out. Giancarlo Ansa with the three, oh, knocks it down. Wow. And plays the crowd. I love that. He's like the pantomime villain, hands up to the crowd. Love draining the three and drawing the air out of the arena. What Five point game. game. We go on this quick take. Jacobitis went hard. Can't get the two to go. Lazic, foul on the play. Good foul on the play. Yeah, smart foul, um, because they were overloaded on that side. Graconis was the only defender on the far side. And uh, you had Lazic, I think, was uh, spotting up in the corner. Ready to uh, pounce on that one. Possession for Slovenia. Doncic again with the assist. Shankar relieves the pressure, the laggage. Doncic trying to play in the post, likes his match up in the post. There's no way that pass angle is going to work, though. Steps back for the three, off the front of the ring. Defensive rebound pulled in by Sabonis, who just owned the space. 1.40 to go in the third, five-point game. Gonis looks down low, Sabonis gets a touch, he needs lots of touches. Moves to the middle, inside out. The little flyby. Offensive. Yeah, it's the right call. Benjus with the fake and did too much to try and draw the foul. Just puts his shoulder into the face of Chanchar. If you cleared out in the way that they're claiming, yeah. Well, I think the referees will look at it. I'd be a little bit surprised if they change it. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm on board for that being an unsportsman life, but... Well, we're getting it to find out. Yeah. Let's take a listen. Well, they got there in the end. Didn't extend the elbow, so we normal foul. foul. My question, though, is why is Sabonis kicking it off? He's four feet from the hoop, has a size advantage, can finish Harry once. Took the chance to kick it off. I think that size advantage is against Muric, though, and Muric just doesn't back down. He plays uh, as a true captain, uh, you know, with his heart absolutely firmly there, and, and Sabonis doesn't quite have that aggression yet. He needs to develop that on the national team level. Running Doncic into the post now, guarded by Gelalidis. Backs in, backs in, inside out. Blazic thinks about it, puts up the three, drops it. Ice in those veins. And I love the different looks they're trying to drive off Luca. On the ball, off the ball, up at the perimeter, in the post. Anywhere they give him the ball, he's creating. Sabonis needs a touch, one on one in the post. He's just got to create an angle. I know Popelvich is looking to, but they have to take him to the three point line to make the feed. And they'll pick, posts him up. Two on the clock, gonna have to take the tough one from the corner. It's nothing. Yeah. An indecision, no one, 
no one made a big, big decision there. Gregonis is away from the basketball, which is half the problem. And when you don't have Kalnietas on the floor, you don't have Valanciunas on the floor, Sabonis needs to realise he's the leader. He needs to take that mantle. When he gets the ball, be direct, be aggressive. The team are happy for you to go to work. You might not score, but that's not the point. You're taking the leadership role. You're taking the role that your teammates need you to take. Helbich gets it into the half court. Lazic likes his matchup. Going to try and put some foot speed here. Attacks it and draws some contact. And not the smartest foul in the world because he was out of control. Great decision to go at the matchup. What anyone was doing trying to help off Luka Doncic in the corner is a debate. And there's the contact. A Blazic on the free throw line and a chance to re-establish the double-digit lead. Yeah, and that's been just his fourth foul as yep. well. And Doncic, I think this is a smart move. Get him out of the game. Absolutely smart. Give him a little bit more of a breather. Let's be honest, he's probably playing the full ten minutes of the fourth quarter. Blazic makes the first. They've absorbed that little run that Lithuania put on the floor. But Lithuania went very, very inexperienced altogether. And they've, uh, they struggled the last couple of offensive sets. And Blazic comes up with just one from two. So there's around a six second differential between game and possession. Dragobaitis. A flare back. Again, the defensive effort, tremendous. That's just pressure. Ten seconds for Hagablajic to get something he wants. Sets, puts the three up. And he's fouled. And they foul the three. That's a terrible play by Sabonis. Just doesn't need to do it at all. Shocking decision by Sabonis. He's had a real rough phase of play. He's not been dominant on the offensive end and made a real rookie mistake on the defensive end. 3.5 seconds left as uh, Jakob Lazic on the free throw line. He's normally uh, in the book. Ten point game with two to come. Well, he was bound to miss it once I said he was putting them in the book. <laughs> sorry. For those Slovenian fans out there, I'm sorry I just uh, I said that. But uh... Feel free to send your angry <laughs> emails in to Mark Clark. Lazic goes two for three. And we're looking at an 11-point game. They're going to have to take one from, the, from deep. Gligonis. Prayer is not answered at the end of the third. And that has been a Slovenia dominant third quarter. They responded, Lithuania, but in the end, with rotations really working well for Slovenia, they lead it 80 to 69, and people are stepping up for the team in blue. They lead it with it by 11, and they're 10 minutes away from a Tokyo ticket. Yeah, you're absolutely right. A Slovenian dominant quarter in every single facet of the game. Their three-point shooting levels are going up. They're back at 48% now and things are going their way. And we said it before, if it's going to be a 100-point game, it's going to be Slovenia's game. Well, let's take a look at those uh, at the third quarter. And the start was just uh, a clinic of option decisions as Doncic penetrated and found the open man. And, he, and the other thing he did was get Chanchar going in the game. Yeah, absolutely, from the off. This was the opening shot. Um, two shots of the quarter was into the hands of Chanchar for three, into the hands of Toby for three. And uh, Luca just flipped the switch from scorer to provider at the start of the third. Then when Toby got in foul trouble, Luca changed things up. He looked to go to the basket himself. Then they changed it up again. They fed the ball to him in the low post to be creative from a different place. And yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, Luka Doncic is pulling all the strings right now. 27 points, nine rebounds, 11 assists. He is putting a hero's performance in, and uh, the pockets of Slovenian fans are certainly showing their appreciation for him. The coaching profession is an emotional <laughs> pressure 
charged pr profession. I think it's a life shortening profession wow. as well. <laughs> Valentunas is back and he has to have the quarter of his life as a national team player right now. Him and Sabonis together have to play as many minutes as possible in this fourth quarter. Yeah, other than foul trouble, I don't see them going out of the game. I really don't. I see both of them playing the entire game now. So Slovenia trying to buy a little bit more minutes on the bench in for Doncic at the start of the fourth. Kalinidis, they go under the screen. Kalinidis again, Sabonis comes high with the screen. Kalinidis gets it off, Gagonis on the penetration. Finds himself in a little hole, but draws contact. And Muric was doing a great job defending Valanciunas. He was fronting him, which you're kind of thinking in size differential, that's really tough to do, but he was doing a phenomenal job cutting off any chance of any passing angle into the low post. Uh, and they're going to need him to. They're going to need him to do it for an awful lot of the quarter. That was only his second foul, so he should be good to go. The 14. Just go high-low. And they turn it down for the jump shot. Sabonis can't get it to drop. And Nikolic cleans up on the glass. Rebounding just makes it all good. Nikolic has it. And they're going to spend some time with the ball with this, right, with this rotation on the floor. Unless they've got something really early, they'll spend some time with it as they are. Eight seconds on it. Nikolic moves it on. Chanka. Well, they had Kalnis in the air and turned down the option. He's going to have to put this up. Two on the clock. Takes the tough two. Drops it. Oh! They're just, they're unreal at the moment. Everyone within that blue jersey is stepping up to the challenge. They are rising to this pressure. Um, you have to be impressed. Kalanidis turns the corner, drops it. It's a bonus. Thought about the two and then tries to go to work. The help comes from the baseline side. They rotate out really well. Sabonis gets another look. They have to put up the jump shot and hits nothing. And that'll be a violation. Yep. So you had... Sabonis and Valanciunas in the game, and you've taken jump shots. And that can't be that can't be what was talked about between the quarter breaks. But to be fair, Slovenia have made them take jump shots. You know, we talk about pick the poison, don't get me wrong. Valanciunas and Sabonis could be working harder to get that positioning to receive the ball, but Slovenia are putting everything on the line to force Lithuania to make jump shots. Chanchar feeling it from three. Oh, oh wow. wow. Who needs Doncic to come back in the game? Chanchar, five points. Back to back at the start of the fourth, opens it out. 16 point game, and there's a mountain for Lithuania to climb. The Gunless tries to answer from the three point line and doesn't. I still don't think the answer is early three to Lithuania. No, it really isn't. They know at that stage of the game, maybe three more minutes in, and they're still at 16 points. You're starting to look to score uh, from outside, but not at this stage. Nikolic wants to join the party. Lazic hits the deck. Gagonis is fouled by Pelic, who did with uh, Blazic down the floor. Yeah, I had to stop place. the clock. Yeah, he took one for the team, Prepelic. Yeah, you can see the reaction. I think that's how every Lithuanian feels in the arena at the moment. I think Alvida Sabonis summing every, that one up. Every pitcher tells a story. 85 to 69, and things uh, <laughs> don't get any better. Nikolic was great in that little spell there. That's the role you have. You just have to absorb the roll, give it all you've got. You know you're going to be in there for a short time. Just just some high-low stuff might help with some change of passing. You know, Grigonis is fouled on the way up. And they're going to call that on the floor because he was passing it off. Doncic called it, and the referees agreed with him. Grigonis doesn't know that yet. He's gone to the free throw line. It's the right call, though. Yeah, yeah. It is the right call. But that's Muric now on four fouls as well. They are running out of post defenders, but also the time is running out for Lithuania to capitalise on that. Well, they're running out of post defenders without any of their posts in the game. So, you know, they've got people to rotate. They've still got fouls to give. Kalanidis, please, can they go high low? Please, can they get Valanciunas to touch of the basketball? Nari gets it on the roll. The help is great on rotation. Valanciunas in traffic. Nari's got to go inside out. They're going to have to put it up. They just about get it away, and it's short. Sabonis is on the glass. Great work to keep it alive. And they get a new 14. Gugonis has it. He's going to have to put this up. He's worked hard for it. And they're going to call the foul. 
before the shot. The whistle went on the foul before the pass. It was just a late whistle. Are they, are they giving the score? Are they saying the foul was off? No, the foul was oh, way foul before was, the shot's well, released. Uh, yeah, absolutely, no way. I think they have given the three. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Big call. Nice cut. Blocked. Doncic is back. Leads the break. <laughs> Has numbers down the floor. Four on three if they find the open man. Akablazic going baseline. Needs a pass. Drops it inside. Great block. Kalinidis. Well, you, you, you need to come up with plays in moments. He might have just done that. Offensive foul called as Sabonis leads with the elbow. Six forty-nine, a thirteen-point game, and plays like that could be crucial. Kalinidis was late, got beat, but recovered and stayed in the play. Luka Doncic would advance the basketball. Slovenia, six minutes away from Tokyo, and Carl on a pick and pop, wide open, turns down the three. They're in a little bit of time and possession at the moment. Seven on the clock. Chankar turns it over with uh, Blazic. Penetration needs a pass. Sabonis in the lane, drops it outside. Kalininas, Valentunas is just arriving. Kalininas puts up the runner for two. Timeout, Slovenia, they just need to reassess and refocus where they are. They now lead it by 11, they did leave it by 16. They take the timeout with 6.15 to go in the fourth. Yeah, it's a smart timeout. We're in that kind of limbo stage. Momentum hasn't quite shifted towards Lithuania, but a couple more possessions and it might do. Coach Sakulic is doing the right thing. It's not about changing anything particularly. It's just about hitting a bit of a momentum change in there and hitting a reset button for his players. They also are starting to look tired, understandably so. Get some of your stars just a couple of minutes sitting down. Will uh, hopefully help them refresh. At some point, he still obviously has Mike Toby to put back with a one foul to give. Dimech has done a really nice job, still has two fouls to give, but his little, his quicker lineup has given some problems to Lithuania. Yeah, I don't think Lithuania have put them uh, under enough pressure, but the likes of Muric has done a great job helping out in the low post. Didn't really something we predicted, but probably should have the captain stepping in, doing what's needed to be done in the final uh, with a chance to go to another Olympics, you know, on the line. Understandable he's going to do that. But the game sinks in the balance. 6.15 to go, down by 11, you're the home team. You do need to start making some moves pretty soon to start taking control of this one. Well, Doncic has a triple-double, and there's still six minutes to go. I think we've seen that picture a few times, and we've seen that picture a few times, the smile, the pressure. You don't really want to see Slovenia just try and protect what they've got here. They need to keep that same flow to what they're doing offensively, foul away from the basketball. Yeah, as the clock ticks on, it's tempting. If you're, you're up by a double-digit lead to start time management too soon, start running the clock too soon, I don't think that would be advisable because trying to jump start your offense when it's when it, you know you basically hit the pause on it, that's not easy. Well, the more minutes Mike Toby plays for the rest of this game, the more likely it is that Slovenia will make it to Tokyo. Propelic. And Toby flushes the alley-oop. Yeah, right on cue. Right on cue. And that's a play they've run dozens of times this week. Big Onis tries to turn the corner. Kalnidis still not touching the inside. Big Onis takes the ball screen and doesn't attack it. And it's still not touched the inside. They go with a tough one. But Kalnidis just throws it up and bakes the prayer, leaning away, running away. And how many games throughout his playing career has he done that for the national team? When they've needed him, the clock's running down, he's been there. Doncic, Toby for three, just decision and execution out of the top draw. 90 to 76, Toby has the two at the ring and then the three. 
and the air gets sucked out of the Zalgiro Arena. Finally, Valentunas gets it in the block, goes to the baseline in traffic for two. Unstoppable. And he is. Once they get in the ball in the right place, there's nothing that Slovenia can do to stop him. Even if you put Toby in that situation, he's not going to be able to stop Valentunas. But is there enough time for Valentunas to get him back in? And there's no time if they give him right hand layups to Luka Doncic. I mean, no one helped at all. And Slovenia now really trying to put this one to bed. Kalinidis, vicious. And Valentinus gets another touch, goes to work on the inside. Looks at the official, didn't try and finish in Slovenia. Something has to happen here. Yeah, Lithuania looked very, very lost on the offensive end. The energy's gone out of the arena, and you just wonder at what point will the Lithuanian team just be broken? It might be now. Dunches can't get it to go, and he was trying to put a dagger in, even though there's <laughs> four, four minutes to go. Nate is still only 14 points, there's still plenty of time. But they've got to go to high percentage areas. Nikovicius has it knocked away, draws the contact. And Slovenia in, that's the other thing, already in the penalty. Be aggressive on the penetration, be aggressive throwing it to the inside. If you have to get back looking ugly from the free throw line, do it. Ben just checks back in. And that's interesting, Valanciunas taken out of the game. I'm not sure that's the, the wisest of move. Valanciunas isn't happy. He literally just got his first score in a while and showed how dominant he could be. And now he's back on the bench and Benjus is in, which is a completely different prospect. Not sure I understand that rotation. Well, it's 3.40 to go. Uh, when you study the game as such, they don't think there's enough time. They're going to have to make more threes, which, you know, it's a roll of the dice. And in you know, your Olympic future on the line as a coach, back yourself, roll the dice. And that's what coach Mascalonis has done. But it's this end of the floor where things have to happen. But do you take your big guy out of the floor that scored 14 or 9? Why uh, not take Sabonis uh, out of the uh, rotation? I don't understand. I'm, I'm fully agreeing with you, to be quite honest. It's just, um, I'm, you know, it's, uh, it's an interesting decision, but he's backing himself, and that's what he has to do. Propelic, Toby will move it on. They're down to five. Doncic has it. Downtown for three. Oh, great work on the glass, though. Maric again comes down with another positive stat. Doncic. In the lane, little floater for two is good. And Luca is lovering every last moment of the game now. Takes himself to 31 points, 10 rebounds, 12 assists. Unreal. Still only a 14 point game. You know, for those of you watching these qualifiers elsewhere in the world, Canada came back, scored 10 in 50 seconds. This is still more than doable. County Innes, definitely doable, knocks down the three. You're never done if you live you ain't here in this gym. Just a stop and a score, and they're back into single digits. Doncic has it. They're trying to just eke out time here. And they're being allowed to eke out time. It's such a hard. Propelic puts it on the floor, lines up the three, is off. What a rebound. Blazic just outworked his opponent, and there is zero excuse for being outworked at this point. Foul on the play of Kalinidis. And it's a smart play because Prepolic is being guarded by Sabonis on the perimeter, leaving no one to pick up the defensive rebound. They had to resuscitate Luka Doncic <laughs> at that point. I'm not surprised. He's put in a big 31 minutes, but he has scored a, a point every single minute. He's on the floor, 31 points. And when we come back, Lithuania, from the Lithuanian timeout, Slovenia will have the ball in the front court on the sideline. 2.22 to go. You know, it's a mathematical challenge now, stops and scores. If, if you've, got to get, you've got to score and get a stop, score and get a stop, and even then you're, only, you're back to two possessions. Yeah, it's, it's the point of the game where we talk about near perfect, and that's what Lithuania need to be on both ends of the floor now. They need to fire up the three-point machine on the offensive end, and they need to find a solution to Luka. And at the moment, they've not found a solution to Luka Doncic. There's only 2.22 to go, Mark, and I know, you know the temptation is get them in threes, but you can get quick twos, you know, you can run in quick twos, and if you have to foul or if you have to try and get 
stops, etc. You've got to tick it over quickly, whether it's a two or a three. It's down this defensive end where they're going to have to come up with plays. Yeah. And it's just, it's just no excuse for being outworked in that. They got the miss, and they gave up an offensive rebound. And yeah, it's, it's criminal at yeah. this stage of the game if you want to book that, you know, that spot at the Olympics. You can't make those mistakes, but you're absolutely right. The tempo of the game on the offensive end has to increase for Lithuania. They just have to keep the thing ticking over and hope the defensive end is able to come up with some big stops. Well, the inbound is simple and too easy, but Duncic has it again. Don't foul him. Make him earn it. Steps and kicks. Papelic with five on the shot. He's going to have to put this up. Takes the deep three. Is off. What a board by Toby, and they just about clear it up, and there's a loose ball foul, which means Gorgonis will walk the floor to shoot the throws, and that gets them back into single digits, and not a lot of time off the clock. Toby yeah. almost came up with an amazing rebound. And Doncic is asking the right thing. That's Muric's fifth foul, so he's out of the game, and Doncic is like, why are you doing that? You're 30 metres away from our own basket. We don't need to be chasing that down and giving them the ability to, you know, turn the scoreboard over while the clock's not yep. moving. Chanchar checks in. Gregonis, as you'd expect, knocks down the first to a 10-point game. All right, he goes one for two. Sabonis can't secure it. Toby looked uh, worrying at the official. No whistle. Luka Doncic has it on the right end of a 10-point margin, and we're in the last two minutes. So they're going to try and chase him off the ball. They don't want to foul him, but he goes straight back to him. No one stayed. Open man, Chancho, they deflect it. That's the stop. Now they need the score. Gligonis leads the break. They're 10 down with the ball. Injuice puts it on the floor, kicks it. Gligonis turns down the three. They've got to shoot the ball. Penetration and kick. Finally, Avisha shoots the three and gets nothing. Sabonis can't chase it down. Jacobitis lines up the three, is off. A whistle on the play. How many good opportunities do they need in an offense? There was pure, you could see it in motion. Fear of failure. No one wanted to be the guy to take that shot. But uh, out of the people on the floor, on the perimeter, the player who scored the fewest points and taking the fewest shots ends up taking it. Why is Gregonis not taking that shot? Why is Ben just turning that shot down? They but have to have the confidence just to step up and the chance to be the hero. Make both, it's down to an eight point game. This is not done. Even if he's got to make this, it'll be a three possession game. They can get it to a three position game if they make this. There's 11, uh, there's about 10 and a half thousand people at least are just willing this to drop. And it does. Doncic will inbound. Lithuania up the floor. Just keep it out of Doncic's hands. No, they don't. They've got to put more pressure on him. They've got to be all over whoever's got the ball. Well, Slovenia just being incredibly smart. They're spreading the floor. Chanchar has it, needs to put it on the floor. Otherwise, it's a five-second call. Has it a long time. He does have it an awful long time. Luka Doncic fills the double team. He's got to Only jump the double. Five on the possession. Chankar thinks about it, puts it on the floor, off the glass for two. Sweet move, and Chankar's been so, so good in this second half. And I think that could be the nail in the coffin. The Javicius for three, doesn't get it to go. Great effort on the offensive glass. Yeah, I think that ben shot Juice. from Chanchar is a nail in the coffin, and he's looking across at the moment as we see. Uh, a desolate Avidis Sabonis, but over our shoulder in the crowd, he's not been shown on the screen, but Goran Dragic is in the crowd, and that's who a lot of the civilian players are talking to, and that's who Chan Charles banging his chest to right now. Well, these fans are super happy. They're going to do something. They're going to see one of their national teams get to an Olympic Games. Pelic needs a pass. Toby, who's been so, so good in staying in the game. Pelic needs a pass, steps through. Belazic puts it on the floor, gets in the lane, kicks it. Pelic slides up the three, is long. And the defensive rebound comes into the hands of Benjus. It is very rare in your life, even as a professional sportsman, that you get to be a history maker. And that's what the guys in blue are going to be. And Doncic knows it. They are absolutely history makers for their country. And Slovenia have done something that no Slovenian national team has ever done.
they will go to the Olympic Games. Just watch and enjoy. Unbelievable scenes right in front of our commentary table here as well. Oh, wow. there, there's that confirmation, 96 to 85. A desolate Lithuanian team will make their way. Well, thank the fans first. They'll appreciate the performance by Slovenia because that's what this sport is about. And then they will just reflect on an absolute disaster for them. But what a performance by Slovenia. What a performance by Luka Doncic. When asked, you know, what was the biggest deal? Success and medals for, the, for his national team was his number one thing. And he played like that. Yeah, he absolutely did. And ultimately in these qualifying tournaments, there's history makers and there's heartbreakers. You feel for the Lithuanian team, but you can't detract from what it means for the Slovenians. Making history for your country is just the most unbelievable feeling and they can be proud because all week they have played at the highest of levels. And I'm not kidding, I would not be surprised if you saw a Slovenian medal at the Olympics. I wouldn't put money against them pushing all the way to the final stage of that Olympic tournament. If this team can play to their potential, they are up there with some of the best in the world. Well, I would absolutely agree. When you have an absolute superstar in your ranks, and you have real quality around him, and a coach that makes the group work as efficiently, as effectively as Coach Sakuric has done. And you bring in a naturalized player like Mike Toby to add to the, the mix. There is no reason you're not a medal potential. And this is what it's all about. This is why six teams came to Lithuania. That ticket is a ticket to Tokyo. That ticket is what six teams arrived here looking for and only one team go away with. Those are the pictures that are going to be all over the front of Slovenian newspapers. They'll all be over the front of the papers here as well. Yeah, they will. Because don't forget, it's the first time that Lithuania won't be at an Olympic Games since they're independent. But this is the picture that matters. Slovenia qualified on their way to Tokyo. And watch out the rest of the Olympic tournament because if this team shows up like this, not only are they good, they are absolutely fun to watch. Yeah, they are, are their brand of basketball is phenomenal. Their brand of basketball is phenomenal. They don't grind out games. They will match you toe for toe in a shootout. They want to be in 100 plus point games. They've almost done the 100 again today, but they don't care. They pick up that ticket, that boarding pass that will see them all the way to Tokyo, all the way to the Olympics. And you can't say that it's not deserved. They have been dominant, they have put on a show all week and uh, no bigger prize for a basketball player than to get your trip to the Olympics. Wow, they are going to savour this moment. There's all sorts of things that people will be worried about, but Luka Doncic, Blacko, Chancha, Propelvich, all these guys from 1 to 12. Zinga Demic, when they got into foul trouble, just stepped in and did a huge job. And Doncic, well, a living legend with a legend of the current game. You can't get more basketball talent in a single pitcher than no, that. No, absolutely not. And a really touching moment. That really is a great of the past and a great of the current and future of basketball. Uh, iconic players respecting each other. And, you know, Arvidis, Sabonis will be hurting, but he'll also have a huge amount of respect for what this Slovenian team have done here this week. Well, athletes dream of Olympic Games. There are 12 Slovenians as players, staff, and the organization that are gonna actually make it to an Olympic Games. Luka Doncic is just flat out a superstar of our game. It's just unbelievable. He could potentially be the face of international basketball for the next 15 years. The, the talent he has, the joy that he plays the game with, it's infectious. Unless your team's playing against him, you can't help but love him. And look at the performance we have from Slovenia once again, over 40% from outside and some absolute daggers within that as well. The timing of hitting those big threes was critical for them. 
even outside of that Lithuanian's bench scoring far superior. Yes, Slovenia leaned heavily on Luka for 31 of their 96 points, but the role players around him did an amazing job tonight. Well, Chankar, as we said, there you see, has 18, Blazic has 16, Toby has 13, and Papelic and, and Zoran Dragic, who's normally one of the key scorers, has nine. Couldn't do without them, and now we're going to see how they did it in the second half. And, and Mark, this was done and done and created at the beginning of the third quarter because Doncic involved other people and other people made and stepped up and did what they should do. Yeah, really smart from Slovenia's perspective. Clearly Lithuania would have focused on, well, how do we limit Doncic? That's what they would have focused on in the half-term locker room. And what did he do? He turned the tables on them. He went from scorer to provider and they had no answer. The first two possessions for Slovenia were a big three from Chanchar from the top. Another big three from Toby at the top. And really, Lithuania were just completely rocked at that stage. Uh, and there was no real comeback from that point. Slovenia, although Lithuania had some runs in the game, kept them at arm's length. And again, we will focus on Luka Doncic, but look at the players like Chanchar. Look at what Toby's done. Muric stepping in and playing big minutes in post-defense. Every single player in a blue jersey today did exactly what the team needed them to do. They all turned up big exactly at the right time. And they have absolutely earned a trip to the Tokyo Olympics. Well, coach was asked, wasn't he, at halftime, what's he going to do? And he was talking about playing harder defense. But we had that conversation in the first half. Do you take Doncic with two or do you, you know, force him to beat you? And in the end, you know, you can probably, it's very easy with hindsight, you can say, well, they picked the wrong one. And then in addition to that, they didn't give their, their they didn't go to their strong points enough. They miss free throws and they still only lose an 11 point game. Yeah. And, and there were many opportunities for Lithuania to be in that game. But at the end of the day, the best group, the best team, the team that showed understanding of role as much as anything else. And yeah, they had a superstar. But that's a great team performance by Slovenia. And at key moments, they just made good decisions and Lithuania made bad ones. Yeah, Slovenia just, they had the near perfect game today. You know, you could try and go through that game tape and find small mistakes you're not going to find many. That's a very small uh, low lights edit for Slovenia today. And you say pick your poison, but I think Slovenia beat you every which way you offered it to them. You know, giving Doncic the ball, fine. Taking the ball out of his hands, fine. They coped with whatever Lithuania threw at them. An unbelievable performance from this team. The scary thing with this Slovenian team is they're not exactly old as well. A lot of them still have what you would class as the primes to come. You have some experience in the likes of Zoran Dragic, but there's still a lot of years to come. Amazing for Slovenia to be at their first Olympics. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. We have Slovenia go to Tokyo. Bye for now.